Awesome. Um, we're so excited that you're here. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, just a reminder to go ahead and mute yourself if you are not speaking and we will have time for questions um, and conversation at the end of our meeting. I also wanna let you know that the meeting is being recorded. Um, so if you have to hop off for some reason or you know someone who wanted to attend and wasn't able, we will be uh, recording this session and we will be making it available online um, after today's meeting. Um, so there will be ample opportunity to get the information. All right, without further ado, we will go ahead and get started with our presentation about arts and society. My name is Laris Feliciano, and I am the Art Grants Manager here at Redline Contemporary Arts Center. I am also a working artist and have been a grantee in this program and others before, so I've been on your side um, of this process as an applicant, as a grantee, um, and now managing the program. So I'm here to support you as you are putting together your proposals and dreaming and scheming up some wild and wonderful ideas. So before we get into all of the information today, we do wanna make time to do a land acknowledgement. At Redline, we would like to acknowledge that the land on which we reside is the traditional territory of the Ute, Cheyenne, and Arapaho peoples. We also recognize the 48 contemporary tribal nations that are historically tied to the lands that make up the state of Colorado. We honor elders past, present and future, and those who have stewarded this land throughout generations. We also recognize that government, academic, and cultural institutions were founded upon and continue to enact exclusions and erasures of indigenous peoples. May this acknowledgement demonstrate a commitment to working to dismantle ongoing legacies of oppression and inequities and recognize the current and future contributions of indigenous communities in Denver and across Colorado. Thank you. All right. So what are we doing here? What even is this? Arts in society. Um, I am beyond thrilled to be here today telling you about this program. Um, it is close to my heart um, and I think it's just a really exciting opportunity for um, Coloradans of all um, experiences and um, across, uh, across the state. So Arts and Society is a collaborative grant-making program to foster cross-sector work through the arts. Administered by Redline and funded by a cohort of Colorado foundations. So as I mentioned, um, the program is administered by Redline Contemporary Arts Center. I am the art grants manager here. I also want to uh, shout out to Louise, who is our executive director and is on the call today. Louise is managing the chat. Um, so if you have questions that come up as we're talking, you're welcome to throw those in the chat. Um, and Louise will do her best to, to address those questions. We will also have time at the end to talk about those things. Um, but Louise, do you want to hop on real quick and say hello? Hello. <laughs> yeah, no, please uh, drop any questions you have on the chat. And thanks all for joining us today. Uh, we um, are also excited. I just noted that um, Brooke Dilling, I think if you're on the call, one of our other funding partners, which uh, is the Denver Arts and Venues um, is on the call with us. So if any of our other funding partners are on the call, please uh, say hello and give, your, give a shout out. Uh, because again, this collaboration doesn't happen without everybody uh, throwing in to pool money so all these statewide projects can happen. So yeah, just thanks for being here. Thanks, Louise. Hi, Brooke. Excited that you're here. Um, I will go ahead and just tell us about all of our funders that we have um, with Arts and Society. It is a collaborative funding um, partnership. And um, it's really wonderful because I feel like the collaborative energy that funds arts and society really mirrors the collaborative energy that is the projects that you all bring to the table. Um, and so there is a real commitment and um, 
and real belief in the power of collaboration. And that is demonstrated here um, with our funding partners. Um, here in 2022, we have Bonfie Stanton Foundation, Colorado Creative Industries, the Colorado Health Foundation, and Denver Arts and Venues. So some key facts about Arts and Society. What is this program? Arts and Society is a grant program that supports cross-sector work in the arts. Um, and cross-sector can look a lot of different ways. What we're looking at when we talk about cross-sector, it's taking the arts and something that you don't necessarily immediately consider or imagine working with the arts and then putting those things together to make change. So we often talk about the arts and, the arts and um, oh, youth yeah. development, the arts and agriculture. Um, and again, if you are on the call, please go ahead and meet yourself. Thank you. We will have time for questions later. Some other examples of cross-sector, um, the arts and criminal justice reform, the arts and youth development, the arts and mental health. So the list goes on and on, and you know best um, what the issues are in your community that are the most present um, and the most kind of in need for a program like this. So the funding focuses on collaborative projects that bring the arts and these um, other sectors together to promote social change. And again, you know in your community what that social change is, what is needed, um, what the community is, is asking for. And this is a statewide program. We really encourage for folks across Colorado to apply. Um, every uh, nook and cranny and corner of the state um, is uh, eligible for this funding. So please spread the word in your communities. So granted projects must be completed within a 24 month period. Um, you can do a one year project or a two year project. It's um, again, up to you and your community, what you um, are needing and the timeline that, that fit, best fits what you're doing. Um, so that's really up to you and your community. Um, but the longest that we will fund our 24 month or two year project. So keep that in mind. And then we are granting about 21 to 22 grantees per year with an average grant size of about 24,000. So just give you kind of a general idea. The grants um, will be between 5,000 and 35,000. So again, that 24 is kind of a mid range, but you know, projects um, will have kind of a broader range of what they need. So that's the range that we will be funding up to 35,000. And we do not require matching support. Now, if you have matching support or you're seeking matching support, we certainly support that, um, but it is not required. Um, now, Arts and Society, one of the things that we feel like is really exciting about this program is not only are we funding um, projects that support cross-sector work in the arts across Colorado, but we're also providing community and some infrastructure and support um, in more kind of day-to-day nitty-gritty uh, administrative community ways. Um, so one of those is that we do the learning community meetings and these are meetings where we bring all of our grantees together um, to talk about our projects, where people are at in their project development, um, to get support from each other, to network, to talk to funders and get a nice idea of what else is out there, the future of um, these programs in Colorado, and to really just strengthen the network of this kind of um, activism and creativity and work that is happening across the state, because we know, we know that it is, um, and these learning communities are an opportunity to really strengthen those networks. We had a learning community uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and it was the first one we had in person in a really long time. Uh, and it was so fun. It was so great. I mean, you know, we had folks from, you know, uh, Alamosa and Steamboat hanging out um, and collaging together. And it was just really lovely. Um, so that is one of, I think, one of the best uh, things about the program, because not only are you being financially supported, but there is support to, um, to build your capacity through networking and community building. 
We also offer evaluation support. So we know how important it is to survey your participants and really document um, the impact of your work. We also know how hard that is. Um, so Arts and Society provides um, an evaluation toolkit that you can use for your project um, evaluation. Um, and we also help you through that process. We also do marketing and communications for you, just helping to spread the word about the work that you're doing. And we also put together mini documentaries that um, encapsulate the work and showcase what you're doing in your communities um, and also showcasing the work of arts and society as a whole. Um, one thing I will note here on this side, um, on the left hand side of the screen, the application deadline is August 29th. We'll talk a little bit more about timeline later, but I just want to make sure that is uh, big flashing letters uh, on your radar so you know when the deadline is for our application. Okay, so eligibility. The uh, Arts and Society grant is open to nonprofits and individuals. So you do not have to be an arts organization to apply. Um, we do encourage applications from non arts organizations like human services groups, neighborhood organizations, healthcare organizations. Um, we have had um, an application from a hospice organization working with local artists, as an example. Um, we have, uh, you know, we've had applications from um, from the Boys and Girls Club, um, from other organizations that are not immediately arts organizations, but they're working with arts folks. The primary applicant has to be from Colorado. This is a Colorado grant. We're supporting Colorado work. So if you are an organization um, or an artist outside of the state of Colorado, um, and you're interested in applying for this program, you must partner with a local Colorado organization or artist within the state. Um, and that person needs to be the one who is applying um, the Colorado resident. Now, if you have um, a fiscal sponsor that is in Colorado, but the organization is outside, that doesn't count. Um, the partner organization must play a critical role in the implementation of the project. And organizations, individuals, schools, and government agencies are encouraged to apply. We specifically look for projects that demonstrate a high level of collaboration. So we mentioned this earlier, collaboration is at the core of this program. Um, it is the essence of what we do. So we love to see really thoughtful, intentional, um, meaningful collaboration between artists, organizations, the target community, um, if it is a school community or um, a, an immigrant community, whatever it might be, um, the, all the entities that are involved have to really have a genuine stake and uh, uh, kind of leg um, in the project for us to really understand and see that it is genuinely collaborative. Previous grantees, I know there's a lot of you on the call. It's so great to see you. Um, previous grantees are absolutely eligible to apply. We just ask that you be up to date on all of your reporting for your, um, for your current or past projects before you are able to apply for future funding. So if you are, if you are a current grantee, and you have not reported on your current project, then you are not eligible to apply for future funding. Um, if you get that report in before the deadline, then you will be eligible. And I know so many of you will have so many questions um, about the status of your specific project, and um, I will be available um, via email to answer your questions about your specific projects. Um, so again, you will not receive overlapping funding for the same project. Okay, so just a little bit about the application process itself. Um, the application is on Submittable. That is the platform that we use to um, collect our applications. The application is no longer a two-step process. So for those of you who have applied um, in the past, a couple of years ago, we used to require um, 
where we did a longer process where we'd have a letter of interest followed by a more detailed application. Um, now what we do is we just ask for the full application up front so we can see everything and get those funds to you quicker because um, we know everyone is ready to go um, on these projects. So the applications are due on August 29th at 11.59 p.m. Um, it is literally on the second that the application turns into a pumpkin and it is no longer available um, for you. So I highly, highly advise you to get your application in early. Um, technology is funky and uh, fickle. <laughs> so um, I just, for your own sanity, advise you to get it in early so that you're not um, stressing about last minute tech stuff um, and anything like that. Grantees will be notified and funds will be dispersed in December of 2022, and we will make our formal announcement of grantees in 2023. And our review panel changes every year and represents a diverse community of experts in the arts, human services, um, other community services across the state. So um, it's a really a wonderful group of folks that um, we make a real conscious effort to make sure that they represent um, as much of the state as possible. Our funding partners are also um, participating on the panel and the review process. One thing I just want to jump in and share about the panelists also is uh, there is also a concerted effort to have not only geographic representation, but also issue related. So for those who, you know, are coming from a mental health or wellness or um, immigrant support or uh, individuals experiencing homelessness or veterans issues, uh, we really try um, to get um, past grantees or uh, individuals who are currently uh, you know, in the work to help uh, bring that knowledge and experience to the table when reviewing applications. So just wanted to um, throw that out there as well. And change is possible. <laughs> Thanks that so much, is. Louise. Change is possible. <laughs> um, appreciated. appreciated that one. <laughs> and thank you, Louise. It's really, really important for us to remember as well. Um, so going into the nitty gritty of actually putting your proposal together, putting your application and your budget together, um, there's a few things that we um, want to make sure that you're considering just um, pieces of advice and um, things that we have seen and learned. So first and foremost, be realistic in your budget and account for all costs related to your project. Now we understand you might not know every single nitty gritty detail, right? For example, you might know that you need a bunch of paint, but you don't know exactly how many gallons of paint and you don't know exactly what colors and exactly what sheen, okay? But it's helpful in your budget to go ahead and imagine that as close as you as you can um, so it is reflected in your budget. Um, and that's just one kind of small little example, but really being um, thoughtful, realistic, um, and accounting for all costs goes a really, really long way, even when you have to estimate some of those costs. Um, we also ask that you consider the cost of those learning community meetings. Um, when you are putting your budget together, you will wanna account for that travel. Um, we are able to um, support uh, small travel stipends for grantees, but it doesn't cover all of it. So we encourage you to include travel in your budget, especially if you are um, outside of Denver Metro. And this is huge, huge, huge. Please remember to allocate funds for artists and admin. Um, so this means you, <laughs> the person who's applying for this. Are you, um, are you an individual artist who is doing this project on your own because you're super passionate about this work? Um, that's awesome. And we love that passion, but that passion won't pay your rent. So please, please uh, pay yourself um, and the artists that you are working with. It goes a really long way when we see um, those kind of thoughtful and intentional um, line items. And with that, I always tell people to allow the budget to really tell the story of your project. We understand that these, you know, we try to keep the application kind of tight and, and con concise so that it's not too much for you to complete and not too much for our uh, panel to review. 
Um, but at the same time, you've got a lot to say, right? So allow your budget to be a place where you can really tell the story of your project and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Your budget can do that by showing you're paying local artists, by showing that you are um, paying local businesses for your printing or your um, t-shirts or whatever else you might be doing. Um, the budget can also tell us a little bit about your timeline. So really allow your budget to be a, a place where you are telling the story of your project. Feliciano, can you hear me? Yes, hello. This is Mitch Rivers. I just had this is my first Zoom meeting since I got my computer working back and I didn't want to miss this at all. I was looking at my email how to get into you. So um, I'm glad to be able to um, capture you at this time. Wonderful. We're so glad you made it. Thank you for being here. Yes, uh, uh, because uh, last year I did miss, I was uh, looking for grants um, regarding this music entertainment and also uh, community lessons. And I was told uh, several of them that I was off date. They were all canceled or all filled up to try this year. So I did see email. Right on. Well, you are on time this time, so we're glad you made it. And we will have time for more questions and conversation at the end of the meeting. So if anything comes up, go ahead and keep it in your brain or write it down in the chat. Okay. All right. So some more application considerations. Be specific about what your project activities will be. Um, is this project centered around a one-time event? Is it centered around a series of workshops? Um, is it um, uh, just a bunch of gather small gatherings? Um, or is this all happening um, online? You know, there's a lot of different ways that your project can unfold and helping the panel to really envision and imagine what that's gonna look like is gonna go a really long way. So being specific when you can. Now we understand, again, there are things you don't know yet. You're putting this together. Um, there's things you cannot know yet. Um, so be specific when you can. And when you can't be specific, at least um, acknowledge that you're thinking about it. So for example, let's say you know that you wanna hire um, a couple of local painters to do some work for your project, but you don't exactly know who they are yet. You're still doing that research. Go ahead and include them um, in your budget and include them in the story. So we know that you don't know who they are specifically yet, but you're still, you're thinking about it and you're working on it. And that goes for every um, everyone who you're working with, um, more specifically when we're talking about the community that you're working with, um, being specific goes a really, really long way. So we're really talking here about, is this for or with? And with this question, we're really looking at the communities that are involved in this project. And this goes back to a point I was making earlier about um, everyone kind of having an equal say um, in the project, those genuine authentic collaborations. We wanna know who your community is. So if you're saying our community, um, we're gonna be working with um, underserved youth. That's, that's pretty broad. What, what does that look like in your community? Who are those youth? Where, where are they? Um, what are they interested in? Um, showing us in your application that you really know the communities that you're working with is gonna go a really long way. We want to support projects that have those genuine, authentic collaborations, um, not projects where someone is coming in from the outside um, and telling a community, we think this is what you need, so here it is. Um, so that's a very, very important thing to consider and keep in mind as you're putting your proposal together. That all said, we, we don't have to have every partnership fully finalized. Again, we know things are in motion. You just need to be able to demonstrate that you know the field, you know how you will form those partnerships, that these things are unfolding and in motion. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about um, some projects that we um, have funded before, just to give you an idea, some examples um, of what this cross-sector work looks like. Um, Cause it's, 
it's very exciting. It can be so many things, but that could also be a little overwhelming. Like what, it could be anything, okay. Um, so here are some examples. Uh, the first example is the clinic with Tara Rinders here in Denver, Colorado. And the purpose of the clinic was to bring a new culture of cure to Rose Medical Center through movement classes, dance, films, and performance. So this was um, a multifaceted program that was really focused on centering compassion fatigue and nurse burnout um, and addressing these issues with the arts with movement. And so what Tara did is she, um, she put these ongoing movement and dance performances um, and workshops with nurses and um, folks at Rose. And through the arts was able to address this really big problem within the medical field <laughs> of compassion fatigue and nurse burnout. Um, and, you know, this was an issue that became even more kind of prevalent and, um, and, and uh, deep for folks um, with the onset of the pandemic. And so the need for this work was um, even more needed um, and more seen. And Tara also evolved the work into resiliency moments workshops um, that she did online. So she was able to move the work um, into a Zoom space like this so that those um, nurses and um, caregivers were having this experience in this really heightened time. Um, so again, you have movement, dance, an artist who is a dancer herself and a nurse bringing that, um, that passion and that knowledge and experience to address a really serious issue in the medical and health field. Um, so here's just a couple images from that work and a link um, to the website. And we will also make this PDF available um, as well. So you can review this later um, and see these links again, because I really recommend checking out Tara and her work. The next example I have for you is Creative Generations. This was a partnership between Think360 Arts and the Boys and Girls Club of the San Luis Valley. And this took place in Alamosa, Colorado. Teaching artist Eric Dallimore worked with Think360, which is um, an education nonprofit based in Denver. And they came down to the Valley and worked with local artist Nora McBride and the Boys and Girls Club um, to develop and create a public art piece that celebrates the San Luis Valley, the intergenerational community, um, and all of the community connections in the Valley. And this is um, what the piece looks like um, in completion. So it's a project that really evolved um, over time and was very, very community responsive, um, very much about listening to what folks needed um, and were wanting um, at that time. And there is this wonderful space called the Rio Grande Farm Park um, in Alamosa that was a new and growing, is a new and growing community space. Um, and this grant was a perfect opportunity to um, bring different communities, intergenerational communities together to create this work. And then the last example I have for you is Just Us. This is stories from the front lines of the criminal justice system. Um, and this is Modus Theater in Denver and Boulder. And this project supports community leaders who are impacted by carceral systems to tell artfully crafted autobiographical monologues that expose the devastating impact of the criminal legal system and inspire action towards a vision of true justice. And these monologues are incredibly powerful, um, really, really moving, um, really moving work. Um, again, using theater, monologue, performance, um, to highlight and tell stories of the criminal justice system um, that we know is really complicated and layered um, and affects a lot of Coloradans. So here are some images um, from that project. 
um, again, really powerful um, and exciting work. We have more examples on our website. I also have our, um, our most recent 2021 grantees are up there as well. So you can see the folks who were funded last year. I really, really recommend taking time to look at past grantees and just see what has been funded in the past. I think it gives you a really great sense of what folks um, have done, what has been successful and um, just the kinds of things that, um, that we have funded before. That being said, Arts and Society is all about, um, you know, innovative collaboration. So um, really excited to see folks propose things that we haven't seen before. Um, it's just Can I ask to a question before you go? Um, just give me one second. We're going to get okay. to questions in just a minute. Thank you. Okay, so we will open up for questions in a second. I just want to give you guys my contact information here and remind everyone um, the application is due on August 29th. Um, we have our website listed here as well as our Instagram and my email is listed here. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, and um, Again, the deadline is August 29th. It's a little bit shorter of a turnaround than, we, than we've had in the past, um, but we are confident that you all can get um, some brilliant proposals together um, in this two month period. And um, we're really excited to see what you have. So now we can open it up for questions um, for anyone. And I believe we had a question ready to go. Oh, yes. Hey. Hey, Jay, I'll come up on your screen. You know who I am? This is Mitch. Yay, hi, Mitch. Okay, uh, first of all, I wanted to know, is this for a one-time thing for this year or is it for learn a long time um, um, for grants per year or each year you have to apply? That's a great question. So this is a project-based grant, meaning um, we are looking to fund um, fund a project that you are doing as opposed to say you know general operating funds and that kind of thing um, but if it is something that you've already got going on so for example let's say you have um, a festival that you've been running in your community um, for the last couple of years and you really want to see it take off in a new way you could um, use uh, what you have created already as the foundation for an application for arts and society, just okay. know that that grant application has to be for that one project, that two year grant period. And there's no guarantee that that funding will continue after, um, after the grant period. Louise, do you wanna jump in on that? Yeah, no, I mean, how you answered was perfect. I, I would say that, um, in years past, how we've guided is, is, is if you are a 501c3 or if you're um, an organization or school and it's your core program, I would not apply for core program work, like foundational program work, but rather, again, you're, you're being responsive to a current community informed need that really needs some support around it. Or as with an artist, you know, who is typically not running an organization, um you know you have project-based support needs so i hope that is uh helps to clarify okay because um uh, i've been out here for a while i work with several organizations and through me i have various different artists musical artists through all categories even artists and bands and groups and artists from denver to um out of state for the community for uh festivals and and ever since I've been doing I've been needing help uh, to fund and make it greater and we also uh, have a thing where we go to nursing homes and give uh, musical um, uh, you know encouragement for them so we are in all different facets and categories feeding the homeless and this all stems from my company which I need help and um, you know, very few people invest. I do this hard from what I earn and what I put out. Absolutely. No, I would say absolutely, especially as, as individual artists who are looking to 
identify additional infrastructure and, and support and support the folks that they're working with in their communities or on different issues, absolutely apply. Um, so I would certainly encourage you to, and of course, reach out if you have questions. Okay, I definitely will. The last couple of times that we did something uh, with the Blues Festival, a collaboration with uh, Trinidadia or Blues Fest before the pandemic two times, running a bus <laughs> for people to get there from Denver to here and a lot of different uh, organ organizations because I work with Hispanic. We're a big group, Hispanics, Blacks and White Blues, uh, Mexican music, uh, Latin music, a gospel music and I have gospel artists, but it's taken a toll after all these years. And, and I will really be needing um, to step up because we've got also the individual artists that give lessons to people. Yeah, well, that sounds great, Mitch. And you know what? Um, I don't know if you caught my email at the um, on the slideshow, but I'll go ahead and put it in the chat too here. Please feel free to shoot me an email so we can talk um, a little bit more about your specific project and idea because I'd love to hear more and be able to support you. Okay, that sounds good. Is it arts, www.artsandsociety.org? Um, I'm putting my email in the chat right now. Oh, okay. So you can just email me directly. Yeah, go ahead, Louise. Oh, sorry. And while she's doing that, do we have any other questions? So it looks like Connie, you have one. Yes, I do. My name is Connie Sauls Wilkins, and I am the founder of director of Room House Multicultural Theater Company, also known as Mile High Chapter Theater Company. And we have presented Black Nativity ever since 2007. And we've done this production every year. I've never been able to. Um, receive any funding for this project except last year it was the first time in almost uh, over 20 years and in our theater company it has always been our policy to utilize community group community youth i'm sorry and senior citizens and we also have a production that we're doing annually that deals, deals with um, domestic violence. And the title of that production is WAD, Wide Posse, Women Against Domestic Violence. And I just wanna make sure I clearly understand that what I'm hearing means that we could qualify for funding for just these individual projects Yes, I, I mean, I think you could either apply for funding as, as a lead applicant for multiple small projects that could be, could be wrapped into one, or you could direct the different leads to those projects to also apply. It sounds like you are a galvanizing force in, in this uh, production. So I would maybe say approach it from as a single applicant first um, before necessarily having too many applicants flooding with the same idea, if that makes sense, okay. you know? So yeah. you wanna, because what the selection panel is gonna look at how different communities are being supported by different projects geographically across the state and, and related to different issues. So, what I, I would say would not give you an advantage is if, if, you, if you did too many applications dealing with a single issue, because then potentially only one would be funded within that and you'd be competing against yourself. So maybe looking at, at one strong application in collaboration uh, with, with the many folks that you're working with. Okay, so I could say that our organization uh, services, young people, senior citizens, and women that are the victim of domestic violence. Could that be one group? Yeah, and I think you would just uh, need to be able to kind of share where that, um, how, how the uh, makeup of your organization 
holds the expertise of all of those things. So whether it's through letters of support or, or um, oftentimes the selection panel just wants to make sure again that it's uh, depending upon the issues you're going into that it is you know based in the experience and the professionalism of how it is being administered. Um, which it sounds like you have amongst your group. So I would just say, make that clear. Okay, thank you. Of course, of course. Lori, you had a question? Yes, hello. So hey. there's always this sort of issue of community and like what is meant by community within this grant and the idea of like, audience versus the idea of collaborators versus the idea of the community it's for i'm always a little confounded about how to work within that and figure out who like who it serves and how it serves considering it's about the environment kind of all of us but like can you talk me through like what they specifically mean by community whether they mean the community of people you're working with whether they mean the community of people who are audience or all of the above. Is that right, Louise? It doesn't help me, Laura. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because I, I I do stuff to all communities from from Denver to wherever. Just like even the, the fire up in Boulder when they have calling different people as on them and standby people for different efforts for performing for fires or stuff like that. Absolutely, and then, yeah. So it is all, all, all over, different races. Yes, no. we understand so that you guys are, <laughs> yes, we understand that y'all are working with a lot of different folks. So that's the unhelpful quick answer is all of the above. Now, the way that I would structure your application and approach the project is really first start with what is that social issue? What is the social issue that you are addressing? And who is the community that is immediately affected by that? Now, I know in your case, Lori, that gets complicated because you're talking about the environment and we all live on this planet. But then we're looking at the specific location, who is involved and who is directly affected by the specific location that you're working with um, and how can they be involved or um, included. And how does that um, inform your locational selection, right? So, you know, if, if we're looking at it geographically, if you're doing this in Denver, you know, why are you choosing Denver and how is who you're collaborating with to, again, look at issues around art and the environment, amplifying that and supporting the community based on a community informed issue like climate change or the environment. Follow up question. Um, how do we loop the Internet community into that? So then the community is broader than just the geographic location. Um, then you share that you're going to provide streaming or our Zoom online content, virtual engagement. You add that to your application. Say like, and this is how, you know, this uh, content is going to be available to a broader public and, and those mechanisms in which you're going to do that. Awesome. Thank you. Of Thank course. you. Aaron, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, my name is Aaron. I'm from Colorado Music Bridge. Uh, on the call is also Sarah Parrish and uh, Peter Soltzman from, from our team. Uh, I have a question about uh, last year's application. Um, we, we didn't get in and um, I'm, I'm hoping to reapply with a very similar um, vision. I still, you know, want to stick with it. Uh, and I'm, I, I guess, uh, is there um, any like additional feedback that I could maybe get, um, you know, probably schedule a separate time or how, is there like maybe a, a general kind of advice that maybe you could provide for people who are maybe pursuing the same uh, project but were denied in the past? Absolutely. And we super, super encourage you if you've applied in the, in the past to apply again um, and expand on and grow what you have um, proposed before. Um, and I'm just gonna, you, Aaron, you were like right in my brain at that moment because I was just gonna share that I have um, designated office hours set aside for folks who have questions about projects and I'd be happy to uh, go back and look at last year's application and give you some feedback um, based on what I have in my notes from last year's proposal process. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this 
link in the chat here. Now these are um, limited office hours. I am a, a human being, <laughs> um, but I am excited to talk to each of you um, about your projects. So please go ahead and use that link um, to sign up for a time to chat with me. They're 20 minute phone calls. Um, I will relieve all of us from any more Zoom. Um, so it will be a phone call, um, but go ahead and use that link to sign up and ask, um, find a time to ask those specific questions. I do also want to share that, you know, oftentimes the 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 difference between an application that gets funded and that does not get funded is oftentimes the amount of funding right so like our hope on the red line side is to continue to grow this pool of, of funds to support more projects across the state of Colorado because great projects are going on across the state of Colorado so it may not be something that you did wrong or that the application would but it may just be a matter of um, you know the funding only goes so far um, so I just offer that just because it, it may be that your application is totally fantastic and you should apply again. And then those type of factors will come in when the selection panel is reviewing again, you know. Because again, remember that. Um, chosen? I'm sorry, ask that question again. Is there a limit or how many people may be chosen uh, for their projects and the amount of money they may be um, coming up with in their proposal for it? Yes, so we will be funding um, around 21 to 23 projects. Um, the average grant size is about 24,000, but you can ask for up to 35,000. Okay. All right, so many good questions, great ideas. I'm really excited about everything you all have cooking up. We have about 12 minutes um, before we close up the meeting. Any other questions or things folks um, would like a little bit of guidance on? About downloading an application. I mean, this is my first time on here. Most of the time I am more face to face, face, but now that I have this, I'm in it. And do I have to download an application or what? The application is on Submittable, which is an online um, application portal. So everything is in there and you're able to save it. Um, and the link for that is on our website. Um, and Mitch, I'm gonna go ahead and put my link for my meetings in here again, so you can um, find a time to have a call with me and I can help you okay. through some of this stuff. Okay, appreciate it. Yes, of course, absolutely. Um, I, I have a, uh, another question. Yeah. Um, that's uh, so I'm thinking about partnering. We're, we're located where our hub is in Denver, but we're thinking about partnering with an organization in Steamboat. Um, I believe that they uh, have received the Arts and Society grant recently. And I'm, I'm wondering like how maybe that works when partnering with an organization that already has received the grant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would, you know, connect with those with that, that organization and just um, find out a little bit more about where they are in their um, grant process. They're welcome to reach out to me too if they have questions about where um, where they're at or what they're needing to complete. Um, but it sounds like, you know, based on um, just a little bit that I've heard about you and the project you're doing, it might make the most sense for you to apply as your own organization with um, a partnering organization that has been a past grantee. Um, so it's your own kind of your own thing. Um, but there's no kind of, it doesn't give you a leg up or a leg down, if you will, to have um, a current or past grantee as a partner. Excuse me, I don't have a question. I have a comment. Sure. Okay, and this is, I'm Connie Sauls Wilkins, and uh, I have been teaching beginning jazz and piano theory to underprivileged children and youth, and if there's anyone that is interested, please contact me, and I have done this for almost 15 years. We love that, Connie. Thank you. That is exactly what all of this is about, is 
these connections. Um, Connie, so do you have that. the ability to drop your email in the chat if folks are interested, or can I get that as a dictation and I can throw it in there? Okay, I'm not that computer literate, so no I words. can give it to you. Yes, please. Okay, it's Miss Connie, and that's one word, M-I-S-S-C-O-N-N-I-E, and the number is 1250 at gmail.com. Okay, you got it. It, it is now live. Uh, okay, thank you. And Connie, thank you're you, Connie. Uh, underscoring one of the things we love about this program is that folks learn about each other and what they're doing. And so we've seen collaborations across cohorts and across communities because of exactly, you know, kind of what you just mm -hmm. did. So we certainly love that. Um, one of the Thank things you. also, of course, <laughs> I, I'm going to do uh, our own plug here as well, because um, again, I think all of us are uh, as individuals, as nonprofits, as human service organizations, trying to go do good work in the community, there are a few other opportunities that you should just have on your radar that is coming up. Um, so there is, for those of you who are artists on the call, there is an artist fellowship that just went live on the same submittable uh, landing page that you'll find the Arts and Society link. It's called the Green Fellowship, and it just went live today, and it provides $28,000 for artists um, who are um, living in Colorado and um, are career-oriented, and you know, we always are looking to create infrastructure around artists. It does not necessarily require you know, um, a social issue that you're responding to. It's just the idea of supporting artists' careers in Colorado, so check that guy out. Um, and then I had one more. Oh yeah. And then for those of you who would like to attend one of our in-person sessions, we have definitely expanded uh, that outreach this year. So I will be up in Grand Junction for those of you who are hailing in from Grand Junction um, on the 21st. And I think I'll be with uh, Dave Go at the Avalon Theater and with Libby Barbie from Carl Creative Industries. We're also looking to do um, a session with Carbondale Arts and the Red Brick Center. So in the Roaring Fork Valley, we'll be going to Aspen and to Carbondale. And then um, we also are looking um, to confirm one in Colorado Springs. So if you're coming from any of those areas, just know that we'll be posting those additional in-person information sessions that will happen within the month of July on um, the Arts and Society uh, website. Um, Erica, I can look into whether the Grand Junction section will be Zoom optional. I know it's in a theater. I would think we would have that capability, but I can, I can get back to you on that for sure. Oh, I think you're muted. You're muted, Erica. Erica. Oh. <laughs> Do you know, is, is it in the Avalon or the Mesa? I didn't hear what you said. Which theater is uh, it in? the Avalon. Oh, great. Yeah, they should have Zoom capability. Thank you. Of course, of course. Excuse me, did you say the Green Fellowship, like G-R-E-E-N? G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. Okay, yeah. thank you. Of course, of course. And I've put the submittable link in the chat a couple times here too, so you can go straight to our submittable page. That's where you will find the Arts and Society application, as well as the Green Fellowship that Louise mentioned and other grant opportunities um, and the calls for artists that we have open right now. Fantastic. Fantastic. Hello? Yes, uh, yes. there's another question. Bev? Yes. Um, I tried uh, to get to that link uh, for former grantees and it keeps saying page not found. Could you drop that link in the chat uh, section? Sure thing. Again, Let please. me just pull that up. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> and while Lattice is doing that, any other questions? Yes, this is uh, Mitch. If you're uh, submitting after you submit it for it, how long does it take to know if you're accepted and um, or 
if uh, do you have to, or if somebody's critiquing it to make corrections and send it back, or is it a one-time thing um, uh, telling you why or why not? Yes, we will make all decisions in the fall and um, folks will be notified in December and it is a one-time application. So we will yeah. review the application and then um, make decisions and uh, let applicants and um, accepted applicants know in December of 2022. Okay, I got one more. And everything that I do, I work with a lot of nonprofits, but I'm not a nonprofit and then I work for uh, for um, other uh, companies, which is AWS company.